Shalom, shalom, family. Most high in Christ, bless. This is Captain Lemuel, Israel United in Christ. And we are touching on today Christianity, a religion of man, not God. Because what you're going to come to find out is that what you've learned in the Christian church, what you've learned in the Catholic church, what you've learned in the mosque, all has been a lie. You will not find the Catholic church. You will not find the Pope. You will not find any of these labels, these titles. You will not find them in the Holy Scriptures. You will not find the traditions that are being taught in the Catholic church, in the Holy Roman Catholic church. You will not find that in the scriptures. What am I talking about? We'll get to it in a minute. You will not find Islam in the Bible as a religion. All of these things are idols. This is idolatry. That's why it's Christianity, a religion of man and not God, because the religion of Christianity is the most popular religion on the face of the planet. Number two would be Islam. All right. But in Belize, amongst the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, primarily Christianity, which Christ prophesied would be in the earth in these last days. So we're going to start in Matthew chapter 15 and verse one. We're going to start here. Why? Because we need to understand what Christ said in the last days, in his time and in our time today, what would be in the earth? Matthew chapter 15, verse 1. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. So I'm going to stop right here. Because you'll get a lot of people that say, oh, well, this scripture is the scripture that they go to, to justify them eating pork, them eating whatever they want. Because when you jump to verse 11, it says, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the man, out, excuse me, out of the mouth, this defileth a man. If you isolate that verse, yeah, you can use it to say, you would use it to say, Oh, well, it's not what goes in my mouth that that um, defiles me. It's what comes out. But was that talking about eating pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, catfish and everything? No. It tells you what it's talking about in verse two. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? What was the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. The tradition or what what the defiling was, was eating food before washing your hands. That was a tradition of the elders. That was not a tradition of God. That's why Christ had to come back and say, not that which goeth into the mouth that defileth a man. That which with it, which with went into the mouth was what? Food or bread that was eaten prior to washing your hands. That's just a basic understanding. But we're going to go a little bit deeper. We're going to go deeper. Verse three. But he answered and said unto them that he is Christ. Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your traditions? And you see that today. You see that in 2024. You so-called Belizeans, what do you do? You transgress the commandments of God. By what? Your traditions. What are some of your traditions? Christmas is some of your traditions. Guess what? Christmas. Yes, Christmas is some of your traditions. Where did you get that, that tradition from? You got that from the Christian church. That's where you got it from. You got it from the Christian church. And as, as we read on, you're going to see even more. You're going to see that these are the religions of men and not God. Let's put up that image of the, the, the Pope holding up Caesar Borgia. If we have not posted that already, let's get that posted. 
All right. I'm going to read on. Verse four. Um, and I would like to see the images myself as well. Verse four. It says, for God commanded, saying, honor thy father and mother. And he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. So you read. That. So Christ is quoting the law right here. Jesus, the Christ is quoting the law. Why do why does Christianity say that the law is done away with when Christ himself here is quoting Exodus, the 20th chapter? Why do they say the law is done away with? Why do they say, oh, don't worry about the Old Testament? That makes no sense. Because the Christian church has been feeding you lies. They've been feeding you lies. I'm going to read on. Verse 5. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by. And when it says he is a gift, what you read in Mark 7, when it says raka, it is a gift. So the, the Pharisees, they said, well, the children are a gift to the parents. So that's what they use to justify disrespect or dishonor to their mother and father. But Christ said that's not to be so because the law says honor your father and your mother. Notice I says father first and then mother. It doesn't say mother and father. Because, again, you've been taught in Belize that the woman is queen mother goddess on earth. Praise the mother. Meanwhile, Christ said father and mother because the man is the head, according to 1 Corinthians 11. Where are you getting this? The woman is queen mother goddess on earth. Hail, hail Mary. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Verse, 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 I'm going to read verse five again. But ye say, whatsoever shall say to it, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift or raka, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. So you've negated the commandments of God. You've made the commandments of God of none effect by doing what? By honoring your traditions over the commandments of God. Watch this. Mark chapter seven. Mark chapter seven. Mark chapter seven. And I'm going to read verse 11. Verse, I'm going to read verse 10 and 11. It's not Rakah, Corban. Corban, all right? Mark chapter 7, verse 10. It says, For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whosoever curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, If a man shall say to his father or his mother, it is Corban, that is to say, a gift, meaning the child was a gift to father and mother, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by, he shall be free, making the word of God of none effect, through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. Meaning there are other traditions of men that you follow over and above the commandments of God. Let's go back to Matthew 15, verse 7. Matthew chapter 15, verse 7. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, Isaiah is Isaiah. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth. Notice how Christ is quoting the Old Testament. Jesus the Christ is quoting the Old Testament. Why doesn't your pastor quote the Old Testament? Unless it benefits them. The only time that the Christian church, the Pope, the priests, the ministers, the rabbis, the only time that they quote the Old Testament is when it benefits them monetarily. If it does not benefit them monetarily, they will not go to the Old Testament. I want you, the next time you're in a Christian church or next time you see a, a, a Christian um, ministry on television, I want you to see that. They'll say, will a man rob God? They'll quote that all day in order to collect what? The money. But when it comes to 
honor your father and your mother. Oh, that's done, that. Oh, that that law is done away with. Crazy. Verse eight. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me. Teach. I'm gonna stop. Matter of fact, I'm gonna stop at verse seven, verse eight, because I want you to notice something. When you when you go to church, when you've watched on television, and you see the people, you see them in the crowd, you see them, you see the congregation. They'll be shouting all over the place. They'll be running around the church. They'll be falling out and doing all of that. That's what Isaiah saw. Christ. That's what Christ. Uh, Christ is prophesying. He said, "This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth." and honoreth me with their lips. I love Jesus. Oh, praise Jesus. Oh, I love you, Lord. I love God. It says, but their heart is far from me, meaning their minds are far from God. Christians don't read the Bible. Christians do not read the Bible. Pastors do not read the Bible. Youth ministers do not read the Bible. Popes do not read the Bible. Parishioners do not read the Bible. They don't. These missionaries, they don't read the Bible. How do I know? Because they worship and serve white Jesus, which I'll get in a minute. Let's go back to the image. Let's go back to the image that we saw at the first. This is how we know they worship and serve white Jesus. Because of this right here. Where do you find this in the Bible? Where do you find these black robes in the Bible? Where do you find the collars in the Bible? Like that's supposed to make you so holy. All of this is the tradition of men. Where do you see Jesus say worship the cross? Those are the traditions of men. We're going to go deeper in a minute. Oh, we're going to go deeper in a minute. I'm going to read on. Verse 9. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the, the commandments of men. I want you to meditate on that. But in vain they do worship me. Like how the Christian church, they go to worship service, Wednesday night Bible study. Meanwhile, still got white Jesus on the wall. What are y'all studying on Wednesday? You're not studying Revelation chapter one, verse 14 and 15. That's so that shows Jesus Christ is a black man, dark skinned black man with a woolly Afro. Y'all are not studying Daniel seven, Daniel 10. You're not. It says, but in vain, they do worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. That's what the Christian church is doing. Teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. And we're going to go through some of the doctrines this show and in the shows to come, because there are many doctrines that are taught as the precepts of men, not the precepts of God. Colossians chapter two, verse eight. Let's go to Colossians chapter two and verse eight. Watch this. Beware. Watch this. Paul prophesied through the spirit of Christ. He said, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Christ through Paul said, be warned, beware, be on alert. Be on guard. Why? Because traditions of men would be all throughout the earth. The traditions of men would be all would be taught around the world. I don't care if you're in Belize, Central America, South America, Africa, North America, Alaska. A remote island in the middle of the Atlantic. The doctrines of men would be taught in the earth. So now, with that, let's talk about some of the doctrines of men, the traditions of men, 
the commandments of men and not of God. Exodus chapter 20. We're going to go to the same chapter that Jesus Christ himself quoted in Matthew chapter 15. Exodus chapter 20, and we're going to start at verse 4. Exodus chapter 20, verse 4. So this is where you can read about, this is the, the book and chapter, Exodus 20, where you can read about the Ten Commandments. This is where you can read about the Ten Commandments. Watch this, verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Guess what? If you're bowing down to idols and images, as we're getting ready to see, you hate God. You hate Christ. Verse six, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that keep, that love me and keep my commandments. Guess what? If you love God, you're going to keep his commandments. So now let's go through some of the images that are the commandments of men and not of God. God. Watch this. Let's go through some of the images that are the commandments of men. And we're going to touch on idols. We're going to touch on idols first and foremost, because I'm going to read it again. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. So that's what we want to pull up. That's what we want to show. We want to show graven images. Now, I want, to, I, I want you to notice something. Because what people will say is, oh, well, we can't have any sort of images of anything at all. No, that's not what that's talking about. That is not what that's talking about. I'm going to show you something. Watch this. We're going to jump to verse 23. Ye shall not, ye shall not make gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. I'm going to jump back to verse 4. Thou shalt not make a verse five. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. But what do we see in the Christian church? We, I believe we missed some images. We're going to go back to the images of the various popes. They are in order. We're going to start with the image first. We're going to go. There we go. Now we're going to go to the next one. Now we're going to go to the next one. Let's see, where is this cross coming from? This looks like an idol. How do we know? Because our people, when I say our people, you Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you bow down to these images. You worship and serve these images. Let's continue on. You worship and serve the Pope. Let's go on. You worship and serve these idols. Where do you read in the Bible where Jesus the Christ said to, to wear a wooden cross around your neck. Help me understand that. Let's go to the next image. Where do we see Jesus Christ depicted as a white man with long stringy hair? Let's go to the next image. This is what we call serving idols. This is idolatry. This is idolatry. This is idolatry. All right. Watch this. Let me go back. Let me go back. Go to the next image. This is idolatry. How do we know? Because we can read the Bible. We see what the Bible says. The Bible says, I'm going to read it again, verse 23, ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. This is idolatry. Let's go to the next image. This is idolatry. 
These are all false images of Jesus the Christ. And guess what our people are doing? Next image. They're bowing down to worshiping and serving these idols totally against the laws of God. These are tra the traditions of men that Christ warned about in Matthew 15, Mark 7, Colossians 2 and 8. These are the traditions of men that Isaiah warned about. And what's happening? What happened? Watch this, Matthew 24. You're going to hold these images. You're just, going, you're just going to go through these images right here. We're going to stay right here. As we read through Matthew 24, y'all, you're going to stay right there, my brother. You're going to stay right there in these images. We're not going to go nowhere else. We're going to stay in these images. All the images that you've shown up to this point of the idolatry. All right. Matthew chapter 24. I'm going I'm to just get to the point for time's sake. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? The disciples came to Christ and said, What are the signs of thy second coming, Christ? And what are the signs that we need to be looking for that will tell us when the end of the world is upon us? Verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. The first sign that Jesus Christ said, the, that Jesus Christ warned the disciples about, he said, take heed that no man deceive you. Verse five, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. So now let's see who did the deceiving. The Christian church did the deceiving. Let's keep it rolling. The Christian church did the deceiving. So when Christ said, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. The Catholic church came in the name of Jesus. And they pushed a false image of Jesus Christ throughout the earth. They said, I am Christ. And what did they do? Deceived many. So now as we go through the images, let's keep on. Let's keep going through the images. So now as we see, we see the fulfillment of the prophecy that Christ gave us in Matthew 24, playing out in real life. In 2024, we see these things playing out. We see the idolatry. We see the spiritual fornication in real life. The images of silver and gold of a false image of Jesus Christ. We see these things playing out in real life. So now here's the question. Here's the question. Where did these images come from? We got more images of silver and gold. Let's go to them. Let's go to those other images of the gold. Yep. More images of the laws of God being broken and these images being pushed by the Christian church, the Catholic church. This is all idolatry. Let's keep it rolling. That next image. This is all idolatry. This is spiritual fornication. This is evil. This is what Christ prophesied in Matthew 24 when he said many would come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many. These are the traditions of men that are pushed throughout the earth. So where did this image come from? Where did this image come from? Let's go to the man-made religions. Let's go to the man-made religions. So now, let's examine this. Let's examine this. Man-made religions. We read Colossians 2 and 8. The father of hermeneutics, Frederick Schleimacher, created the John Smith, created the Baptist religion in 1608. This is well after Christ was born, 
lived, died, and resurrected. 1608. In 1830, Joseph Smith created the Mormon religion. 1863, William Miller created the Seventh-day Adventist religion. 1872, Charles T. Russell created the Jehovah's Witness religion. Notice how these are all white men, Caucasian men, or who the Bible calls the, the nation of Edom, Edomites. They descend from Esau, Jacob's brother. Jacob is the descendants or the forefather of the children of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. All right. Esau, his brother, is the forefather of the Caucasian race, who today you would call Spaniards, Grecians, Romans, the Spanish, the French, the Romans, the Dutch, the uh, Great Britain, the British. Those are Edomites. They descend from Esau. All right. Let's uh is the image on the screen. Charles Parham created the created the Pentecostal religion in 1901. You see that all these religions, these are religions that are new to the earth. These are the traditions of men that Isaiah warned about, that Christ warned about. So now let's see where the image of white Jesus, the Caucasian Jesus, where did this image come from? We're going to start in the book. Let's go to the book. We want to see the book. We want to see the etchings of Caesar Borgia, a history of the Jewish people. So now watch this. Go to the rare etching of Caesar Borgia, firstborn son of Alexander the Sixth, Pope Alexander the Sixth. Some books will say the fifth or the sixth. It's, that's it's immaterial. Let's go to the book. All right, let's pull that image up right after the man-made religions, right after the man-made religions. All right, thank you. This is an image of Caesar Borgia, second son of Pope Alexander V of Rome, of Rome, painted by Leonardo da Vinci. This is where that false image of Jesus Christ. This is where this came from. Let's go to the next image. All right, I'm gonna read this. The original of this bust was found in the church of San Salvatore, in which means Saint Savior, San Salvatore, Saint Saviors, in Termas, now destroyed. It is an open secret. It is an open secret that Caesar Borgia, the son of Pope Alexander, had posed for it. Posed for who? Posed for Jesus. Notice the thorns in his head. Caesar Borgia is who you worship. Caesar Borgia is who you worship. This is a false image of Jesus Christ. This is what Christ warned about in Matthew 24. This is what Jesus Christ warned us about, prophesied about in Matthew, the 24th chapter. Let's go to the next image. Let's go to the next image. A base release, relief of the Madonna and child. Madonna who posed as Mary and child Jesus, posed for by Rosa Venosa and her infant Valentino, later Caesar Borgia, of which Alexander VI was the acknowledged father. 
It was originally found in the Church of San Salvatore in Termas and later removed to the National French Church, St. Lugid, Francis, where it may still be found as a miraculous Madonna on the left-hand corner of the high altar as the center of a little shrine. So this is Mary and Jesus, a false image of Mary and Jesus. Where in the Bible are you told to worship and serve these images? Help me understand. I'm not understanding. Where did Christ say to worship Mother Mary? Show me the scripture. Show me the scripture. You can't show me the scripture because it's not in the Bible. It is not in the Bible. Let's go to the next image. All right. You see Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 21. And this was an occasion to deceive the world. So the children of Israel, the Israelites, they are in spiritual fornication. Spiritual fornication. They're not physically committing uh, committing adultery or fornication, but spiritually they are. Spiritually we are. The Pope's son posed as Jesus Christ, Caesar Borgia, posed as Jesus Christ. This came out of the Catholic Church. This is idolatry. This is all idolatry. Go to the next image. This is more idolatry. Where is this in the Bible? Where is this in the Bible? I challenge any Christian, Catholic, Mormon, Presbyterian, Baptist. I challenge you, find me these images in the Bible. I want book, chapter, and verse. Now, let's see what the real Jesus the Christ, according to the Bible, what is he depicted as? Because you know what? Some people are going to say, oh, well, we can't have any images based on what you read. Okay. Watch this. First, First Kings chapter six. Let's see if that's true that we cannot have any sort of images. All right. I'm going to just, just to get to the point, I'm going to give you a couple. We're going to go through a couple of verses just for time's sake, because I'm already running out of time. I'm already running out of time. First, first Kings chapter six, verse two. And the house which King Solomon built for the Lord, the length thereof was three score cubits and the breadth thereof 20 cubits and the height thereof 30 cubits. So what are we talking about? Solomon building the house of the Lord. I'm going to jump to verse 11. And the word of the Lord came to Solomon saying, concerning this house, which thou art in building, if thou will walk in my statutes and execute my judgments and keep all my commandments and to, to walk in them, then will I perform my word with thee, which I spake unto David, thy father. Verse 14. So Solomon built the house and finished it. So now let's see some of the things that were in the house of the Lord. I'm going to jump to verse. I'm going to jump to verse 23. And within the oracle, he made two cherubims. What are cherubims? Angels. What uh, two cherubims of olive tree, each 10 cubits high. He made it of olive tree or wood. And five cubits was the one wing of the cherub and five cubits, the other wing of the cherub from the uttermost part of the one wing unto the uttermost part of the other were 10 cubits. So what are we reading about? We're reading about Solomon rearing up an image. Was Solomon in idolatry? Because remember, God told him to build these things. God gave him the blueprint on what to put inside the house, inside the temple. Solomon did exactly what God told him to do. The difference is 
Solomon did not bow down and worship these images. Now, he was an idolatry because of the uh, spiritual fornication that he was in because he married all those strange women. But in terms of the images, guess what? God told him to rear up those images in the house of God. I'm going to jump down to verse 28. And he overlaid the cherubims with gold. So the issue is not the, the image itself or the statue itself. It's the bowing down and worshiping. That's the problem. Because watch this. I'm going to go to Habakkuk. Watch this. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 18. I'm short on time, but Lord's will life last. We're going to go deeper. We're going to go deeper next time. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 18. Watch this. What profiteth the graven image that the maker thereof graven it? The, the molten image and a teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusted therein to make dumb Idols, let's put up some of those dumb idols again. Because what Habakkuk is prophesying, what Habakkuk is correcting Israel about is the idolatry that we were in because of the lies that came with them. The lies that come with idolatry. A false image of Jesus Christ. False holidays. Traditions of men. These are the things that come with worshiping and serving False images, idols, graven images. What God gave Solomon to build in the house of God or the temple of God, those were not idols because those came straight from the instructions of God. Those were the commandments of God on what to build in the house. These churches, these uh, buildings of men, these were not instructions of God to have a cross, to wear a golden cross around your neck. What Jesus Christ was murdered on, what he was martyred on. These black robes, these white collars, these are all the traditions of men. These are not the traditions of God. Because you will not find these things in the Holy Bible. You will not. I go and ask your minister, your priest. Go and ask them. Where? 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 Where is this in the Bible? Help me understand. I need to understand. Where is this in the Holy Bible? You won't find it. I'm telling you right now, your, cat, your, your priests, your ministers, your, your parishioners, they will not find these things in the Holy Bible. All right. So I'm going to go back. Exodus chapter 20. So we get the thought back and then we'll end it on this. Because when we come back next week, Lord's will life last, we're going to go deeper. We're going to go deeper. Because the rabbit hole gets deeper. The, 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 the well of idolatry is deep. The hole of idolatry is deep. It's a deep ditch. It's Exodus chapter 20, verse four. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. That's the point. Don't bow down yourself to them, nor serve them. Verse 23, ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. All right. These are things that we were not supposed to do. But what happened through slavery, through colonization, through oppression, through a loss of identity. We've done what? We have forgotten who we are. We have forgotten that we are the Israelites. We have forgotten that we are God's chosen people. So because of that, what do we do? We worship and serve the creature. 
We worship and serve creation. We worship and serve wood and stone. We worship and serve the a false image of Jesus Christ. We worship and serve false traditions, traditions of men and not of God. All right. So I pray you brothers and sisters receive something from today's lesson. Lord's will, life lasts. We will continue on with our series, Christianity, the traditions of men, not God. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family.